Hi, thank you for joining me. Linda Lamp here. I'm uh, making this video in response to a viewer question that was submitted about visions. So um, this pertains, um, initially it pertains to the uh, Course in Miracles daily lessons and it has to do with lesson 27. But in the grand scheme of things, it, it's uh, a worthy discussion outside of A Course in Miracles as well. So the question is about visions. What does it mean to have visions? Um, and, and how do you know when you're having visions? And the lesson, lesson 27, talks about vision. So it, it's a little, it can be a little confusing. And so this is a clarification video about what we're talking about, both in the lesson when it talks about vision and then in um, everyday life when we talk about what are visions, is there's a difference. So initially in the, in the lesson, uh, lesson 27 is above all else I want to see. And so it's talking about, the lesson is talking about coming to a place where you're asking yourself and the universe to show you what is really true, what is real. And what's interesting about this lesson is uh, it doesn't go into any of the facts of it, but human beings' vision, our eyes, only see about, I think it's about 10% of what's really here. So this has been a, a study of mine for many years. I, uh, when I drive through the wilderness, I'm always asking, please show me what I can't see. And maybe giving you a story uh, to back this up will be helpful. Years and years ago, uh, when the explorers were coming from Europe to um, Americas, the Americas, there was a big sailing ship, masted ship with big sails that arrived off of the coast of South America. And then they used their little skiffs to come ashore. The natives uh, in South America at the time that watched and observed these people arriving only saw the little skiffs. They didn't understand how these explorers, these men from Europe, had been able to come all the way across that vast amount of water that they saw in front of them, the Atlantic Ocean, in these little skiffs. And the thing is, is that because the natives had never seen a masted ship, they could not see the masted ship that was anchored just offshore. So this is a real good example of um, what's behind this lesson, A Course in Miracles today, this, 20, this lesson 27, where it's talking about, oh, above all else I want to see. And uh, there's a couple of extra lines in here. Vision has no cost to anyone. It can only bless. So, in the lesson itself, it's just suggesting that you, you go through your day with this thought. The real key here is to go through life with this thought, to understand that when we look out with our eyes at the world in front of us, we're not seeing everything. And also what we are seeing is influenced by our internal belief systems and experiences. So when we speak in vision in this lesson, we're talking sight, just sight, and being able to see what's real. So the question came up, what are visions, which I, I interpret to be distinctly different. Visions are more along the lines of apparitions or um, uh, even mirages or, or things that uh, 
someone else might not see that you can see. So visions can come to people in many, many ways. Um, and we're each going to be unique in the way that we experience our visions, although there may be some shared uh, experiences among us. Some people are going to see visions in the form of perhaps maybe ghostly appearances, whereas other people are going to have a different form of vision. Um, if you've seen ghosts, those are not necessarily what I would call visions. Uh, although you're using your vision to see them. So it's easy to get bogged down in this language. The viewer specifically asked me about my visions. And so um, I, I would have to say that I don't necessarily have visions as frequently as I have um, what I would call downloads or knowings. Um, I hear voices, but they're not external. They're not out here. Um, they're, they're in here. Uh, and when I see visions, typically my eyes are closed and I'm in meditation when I see things. But other people uh, may see, as we said, apparitions. Uh, you might see auras. You might uh, see what looks like just something transparent or sparkling or translucent. All of these can be visions and all of this can be related both to your eyes and also to your spirit and soul your connection to divinity. So there's a couple of things that, are, that need clarification, right? The physical realm that we observe doesn't really exist. Everything is truly an illusion to us in this 3D realm. And everything is made out of the same material. So this is some background uh, that you may not have or, or you may have it. Um, but it's good to review. So when you take anything, any substance, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be from something living, it can be from something innate or inert, rather, it can be from something dead, doesn't matter what it is, you take it and you put it under the strongest microscope that we have, and what you'll discover is that it looks identical to anything else you put under the microscope, and also that everything is moving. So when we speak about being able to see and have vision and see clearly, I think ultimately we won't be seeing clearly until we can see that everything is the same and that everything is moving with our own eyes. Because that's the reality that we're faced with here. So when we know that everything's made out of the same stuff, and everything's moving, it brings something additional to this lesson that I'd like to see clearly. Or actually, let me read it exactly. Above all else, I want to see. And so part of this lesson is really more of a heart opening in my interpretation than anything else. So when you look out at the world, as you are looking out today and tomorrow and in the days ahead, keep that in mind, that everything's made out of the same material and everything is really moving. And you'll begin to realize that there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. Now, if you're having visions, if you're having apparitions, if you're experiencing a psychic phenomenon, for lack of a better term, if you're frightened by these things, please reach out and uh, let's work through that. Um, there is nothing here but divinity in form and in expression. So there's nothing to be afraid of. 
but there's certainly a lot that we don't understand. And so, um, so that's, I offer that to you if, if you are having problems or issues with the visions that you're having. Now, for those of you that are just um, learning to deal with your visions, um, depending on what they are, they may be disconcerting, you may not understand them. I've had dreams that would fall into the category, I believe, of visions. Um, I've had a lot of premonitions. And um, I know, personally, I never understood what was the point of having a premonition, especially if it was about something I couldn't have anything, any control over. So if you're having those kinds of experiences, uh, what I would suggest is that you are in a heightened state of awareness, you are open, um, and you are in a, a state of receiving. And um, if you're not clear as to whether you should respond to whatever the premonition is, um, I, would, I would suggest that you meditate, uh, go into silence and stillness, and ask from your heart, what is my job here? What is my role? What is my contribution? And, and feel and listen to what comes through. Because quite often, there's, there's nothing you can do. Quite often, if you're, if you're of a psychic nature, you're going to have premonitions, visions, and there won't be anything you can do about them other than just uh, hold them and love them, be grateful for them, because everything is a gift even if we don't understand the context. So I'll share uh, one vision or premonition that I had, and it wasn't specific, but it had I been living in New York City on 9-10 of 2001, I would have left that night because I became very clear that you didn't want to be in Manhattan that night. I didn't know why, but I knew you didn't want to be there. Now, what good was that premonition to me? I, I don't think there was any, any true value in, in knowing that. I didn't call anybody. I didn't tell anybody to leave. I knew if I'd been there, I would have left, but I didn't know why. And sometimes when we have premonitions like this, they can be very disturbing because what's the point? I was quite tortured for a long time after that because I didn't understand why did I have that premonition? What was the point? And I think the answer is sometimes there is no point. It's simply that you are open. You are part of the web. We are all one. Everything is connected. So when you have those premonitions, it simply means you're connected, you're in flow, you're a part of it. And had there been something clear that I was supposed to do, I am confident I would have also received that information. And I didn't. So I don't know if this is helpful. There was another time I can think of that was very distinctive where I dreamed of a car accident that I witnessed. I was not in the car. I was behind the car in the dream and I witnessed a car um, flip and uh, with people in it and flip onto its lid, onto its top. And the next day I watched that happen in real life. Why? I have no idea. My being there, I don't think made any difference. Uh, there were other, lots of other people there, lots of people to give help. So I really don't understand uh, in that regard either why I had that vision. Other than to reinforce that I am connected and that I am in flow and that I am a part of the whole. And so um, 
if you have sharings like this that you'd like to talk about or experiences like this that you'd like to talk about or you'd like to um, explore what they might have meant, um, I'm happy to be here as a support for you. You can uh, contact me at 907-351-3003. Texting is best. Um, I don't always have that phone with me constantly, so you might not get an immediate response, but you will get a response, I promise. And, um, or you can message me through this medium platform, whatever you've found it on, if it's YouTube or SoundCloud or um, Facebook, or through my websites, lindalamp.com or lindalamp.shop. I hope this has been a little bit of help for you, and um, I'm here to support you further. Much love. Namaste.